Listen, just about everybody is going to get a piece of my mind. Just about everybody's getting a piece of my mind. Maybe not Wendy for the most part, but just about everybody's getting a piece of my mind. So, I'm just letting you know this right now. If you're one of those people or one of those viewers that likes videos that's only favoring one person and one person only and you deem that as unbiased, this is not the video for you. It's not the video for you. I can be on one person's side on one minute of this video and later on down the line, I'm dragging them. So, all I gotta say is this right here. If you can't if you can't handle that, go on about your business. I'm just warning you right now. Drop the beat. What's going on, y'all? This is your boy Scatter by Nature TV, and we are here for another review of the Real Housewives of Potomac season six reunion part two. Okay, now we get into the to the to the good shit now. Now I thought that this was going to be a filler episode or whatever, but come to find out, this reunion is actually on fire. I'm enjoying every single moment of it. So let's get on into it. Let's talk about it. Let's not waste no more time. Let's talk about it. Now we pick up where we left off last week with Candace and Mia. Okay, now they were arguing about um, certain situations involving um, Candace and uh, Candace talking about Mia's mother. Now, like, now, like I said. Um, Mia has no right to place any type of blame on Candace in regards to um, her mother relapsing. At the end of the day, you did bring your mother on this show for a storyline. You brought your mother on this show for a check. So a lot of people want to sit up here and argue with me and talk about if Mia wasn't on the show, the show wouldn't be about shit. That's a lie. Because what did Mia bring besides lies, plastic surgery, and her fucking mama? She didn't bring shit, okay? So y'all, y'all kill me. Y'all kill me. Like, I, I see what the fuck y'all be doing, and it's just not worth it. Just because somebody keeps up the mess does not mean that they did something, okay? Her mess ain't even all that entertaining. It's stupid, and it makes me scratch my head, and I just roll my eyes every time I turn around. So, Mia just ain't my cup of tea, period. And she just stupid, and she just makes up shit as she goes along. And she, and she flips her flip-flops here and there all the time and it just makes no sense she doesn't know what she stands for or what she believes in because when you have a plastic brain it, it I mean you can't think straight and she clearly thinks crooked as fuck to be quite honest like I, I just can't rock with me and she's just full of shit but then Karen and Giselle they start getting on their high horse and starts talking about Candace and her mouth yet again and they were sitting up here trying to say that they don't go for the juggler or they don't go for the kill or they don't try to eat each other up and they definitely do they definitely do they do what kills me is candace got a foul mouth yes candace says a lot of outrageous shit yes candace do go below the belt and goes too fucking far yes but it's funny to me that the two people that sitting up here trying to chastise her about her fucking mouth are the main ones that have gold belong the belt with each other. Karen literally just sit up here and insinuated that, uh, that Giselle got an STD. She did. And I thought it was funny when she said it. But however, you can't sit up here and deliver lines like that and then try to sit up here and criticize somebody else because they said, your mama. I would think that saying that somebody got an STD is 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 just way more gutter butt than your mama. That's how I feel. Giselle made a whole damn t-shirt with this woman's tax issues on there. That's below the belt. That's way worse than your mama. Like I said, I don't agree with the whole your mama stance. I don't like bringing people's mamas into shit. I just, I just feel like your mama's just lazy and elementary. Like, that's just how I feel. But when it come down to it, Karen and Giselle really need to quit it with... <clears throat> With this grandstanding that they're doing. They need to stop it with the grandstanding. Because they know that they go for the jugular. They go underneath the belt. And Karen literally went under the belt when she said this woman had a fiery box. This, her fiery box is below the belt. Literally on her body below the belt. Okay, so let's not do that. You know what I mean? Like, let's not try to sit up here and act as if, you know what I'm saying, um... Y'all don't do the same shit because y'all fucking do. Y'all do. Y'all do. Y'all do. Y'all do. Stop it. Oh, and one more thing. Like I said earlier in the videos, um, in the video, like I said, like I said, everybody's going to get held accountable in this damn video. So, for those of you, specifically one person that, that claims that she stopped watching me last year, but she started back watching me this year and she 
talks about me on the other people's videos and then just the other day she said I'd be flip flopping I need to pick a side suck my dick period I just I just find it to be very hypocritical like I really do find it to be very hypocritical of them to be constantly trying to call her out for her mouth like if we're gonna call her out for her mouth y'all need to take accountability for your own damn mouths and my thing about this is I wouldn't give a fuck about because like I said I'm not team Candace at all let's just make this shit fucking clear I'm never I've really just the only time I was really team Candace was season three and a little bit of season four but for the most part I'm not team Candace at all like at all. But if y'all gonna sit up here and call her out for her fucking mouth, y'all need to take some time to think about y'all own damn mouths, for real. At the end of the day, if y'all not gonna hold each other accountable, let everybody shade how to, however the fuck they wanna shade and just shut the fuck up. Because don't tell nobody. Don't, don't, don't tell somebody that got a fiery box and then tell somebody who says your mama that they need to limit what they say or edit themselves. Why the fuck y'all not editing y'all damn selves? Y'all don't edit y'all fucking selves. Y'all don't do none of that. So what the fuck are you talking? What what the fuck are you saying? What the fuck do you mean? You're not doing anything to edit yourself. Y'all say all types of stuff about each other. But yeah, when this girl sit up here and say yo mama, y'all wanna sit up here and get mad because y'all feel sorry about Mia and her mother's issues. The girl did not know about her mother's drug issues. Nobody would know about her mother's drug issues had she not brought her fucking mama on the damn show. That's just how I feel about the situation. Like, stop it. You did it. Like, straight up. You are the reason. You are the reason. Straight up. That's what you are. You're the reason, Mia. You are. So stop it. Stop it with your bullshit. Stop it with your fuck shit. Stop it. Stop trying to stop trying to gain sympathy at this point. Because if it wasn't for you, your mother would not be on this show and you would not be getting a check. Because that's the biggest chunk of your storyline is your fucking mama. Know that. Then this whole conversation about Candace and her body shaming and all of this other stuff. Like, listen, I don't give a fuck at this point. I don't care. Like, why y'all constantly keep on talking about pregnant women this and pregnant women that at the end of the day? Yeah, she got a postpartum body, but so the fuck what? Who cares? Y'all think that a woman is off limits verbally just because her ass is fucking pregnant? What the fuck does that mean to me? Nothing. Shut the fuck up if you don't want this work, period. That's just like on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood when Lyrica was sitting up here going back and forth with K. Michelle knowing damn well she cannot win no read off with K. Michelle and everybody keeps saying, she's seven months pregnant. If she's seven months pregnant and y'all don't want nobody saying nothing to her, tell that bitch to shut the fuck up, period. Just shut up. If you don't want nobody coming for your pregnant ass wife or your pregnant ass friend, tell your pregnant ass friend to shut the fuck up if they don't want this fucking work, period. Because I don't give a damn if you're pregnant or not, you're going to get cussed the fuck out if you come for me, period. I don't give two shits about you being pregnant. You come for me, I'm working your ass out with my mouth, period. Okay? Straight up. I remember being in high school and this girl was pregnant and she kept coming at me and everybody got mad at me because I read her ass the fuck down. So the fuck what? She shouldn't have been, she shouldn't have called me the F word. She shouldn't have said nothing to me. I wasn't bothering her. She came for me so I read her the fuck down. And once I did that, that was a fucking problem. No, that was at that time I started getting a big ass mouth and I was not finna let nobody bully me no fucking more, period. That wasn't finna happen. So yes, I read her ass the fuck down and they got mad with me because of that, because she pregnant. So what? Who cares about her being pregnant? I don't. She should have shut up talking to me. I told her to stop talking to me and she wouldn't. So I read her ass the fuck down. That's that. Stop using that pregnancy shit as a way to shield Ashley from getting red. Was it body shaming when she called Candace hamster face? Is that body shaming? Like, stop! And Candace starts calling out the double standard. And it, and it very much so is a damn double standard. It is a double standard. Like, y'all be so quick to criticize her and how she speaks. What she says, all of this other stuff. But yeah, y'all can do the same exact damn thing to each other. And then y'all try to make it light. Like Karen and Giselle were, were very much so gaslighting the hell out of Candace during this whole damn segment. They were gaslighting her, especially Karen. Gaslighting her like, y'all think the shit that y'all have said to each other ain't as bad as the shit that Candace has said to other damn people? Like, for real. That hot box shit was a mess. Just like the shit that Candace has said, like the bed witch stuff and all that, that was a mess too. Y'all have all done it. Don't hold me accountable for the same thing that y'all be doing and ain't nobody holding y'all asses accountable. Like, that's just real shit. 
It's not about making excuses for me and what the hell I'm saying. It's about, it. okay, y'all said it, but y'all don't hold each other accountable. Y'all only holding me accountable. I can say and do one thing and everybody's on my ass about it. But when somebody else does it, no one says anything. Ashley does it, no one says anything. Robin does it, no one says anything. Karen, Giselle, they do it, but no one says nothing. But if Candace and Wendy say one thing out of pocket, they're labeled aggressive. They're labeled as this. They're labeled as that. That's just what it is. And like, they get completely frightened when they sit up, when, when they say, when they, when they get completely frightened when Candace and Wendy turn up. And why is that? Y'all can turn up all day, but y'all get scared and shit when Wendy and them turn the fuck up like they should. <laughs> Stop. Okay, so Andy said like last year Candace was a disaster on social media, which she is. But now Mia is a disaster on social media. Mia be tweeting out all kinds of dumb shit. She posts all kinds of dumb shit. It's just like it's like looking at a teenage girl making tweets all day. Mia comes with people all day and then it's just like no one says shit. But when Candace does the same shit, don't nobody say everybody got something to say. Like Mia need to stop. Mia, Mia be making herself look real stupid. And then they start bringing up the, the tweets that a scholar um, had brought out. She brought out copies of it and every damn thing. And Mia had nothing to say. Then she went to blame it on her social media manager. Um, her social media manager ain't got nothing to do with what the fuck she tweeted. She tweeted this shit. But then she want to blame it on her social media manager. Girl, bye. Mia is a liar. That girl is a straight up liar. And she don't understand the assignment at all. She keeps failing it. And she needs to go. I don't like Mia. Like, straight up, I just don't like me, and she's stupid as fuck, and she's dumb as hell. There's nothing entertaining about this bitch at all. Like, she annoys me, straight up. Like, I don't like Mia. I don't like Mia, and I don't care who got a fucking problem with it. I don't like her, and I'm entitled to that. I don't like Mia. She's a liar. She's a fraud. She's a fake. She's a phony, and I can't rock with it, period. I just can't. She do too much for me. She do too much for me. Period. I don't like her at all. Shoot me for that. I don't. Then they started talking about classism. And they called out Mia's classism. And they do say that Candace has classism. They do say that Mia has classism. Candace, not so much. People, But people do like to say that um, a lot of us that don't like Candace, we don't like her because she is from like a privileged background me personally could i could really give a damn about how she lived how she grew up i don't care about that honestly it's about the person i don't care where you come from where you are now you could be living in a hood for all i care and if you're a good person i'm still gonna rock with you and whether you live in a hood a house or a fucking mansion i could give a fuck i'm gonna rock with you because you a real person. You a cool person. I could care less about any of that. It's all about the attitude. And me personally, I don't feel like I would hang out with someone like Candace in real life. That's just real shit. I don't think I would hang out with anybody on this show in real life if you really ask me. But that's just what it is. So it's not really about her background for me. I can't speak for nobody else. But for me, that's not what it is. I just I just don't really be digging her persona sometimes. But Mia is very classist. All she ever does is bring up how much money she makes and how many businesses she got and how much better she is than everybody else because she has those businesses and because she has those amounts of money. That's what she does. And I'm just, I'm not impressed, period. They start talking about Karen's fiery box, uh, not Karen's fiery box, I'm sorry, Giselle's fiery box and how um, All About the Tea was the one that put that shit out there. Um, then they start saying that... Um, Giselle did not wish Ray dead, which she did not wish him dead. That's something that Karen made up in the back of her mind. So then um, they were saying that when, I think Wendy had made a remark about the blogs or whatever. And, um, you know, Robin was like, uh, well, well, Giselle saw it on a blog, but um, she really didn't care about it because she knew that it wasn't true. But then um, Wendy was like, well, let's not address it. You know what I mean? The thing about Robin is this right here. She sees nothing wrong with what she's doing. Okay? The fact is, yes, Giselle saw the article about her having an STD on that blog. But yet no one brought it to, well, Karen did. Karen brought it to the, to the TV. Giselle was pissed about it and rightfully so because she brought that on TV. So why can't you understand why Wendy would be upset? When Giselle brings something from 
a blob that all y'all say ain't credible to the TV. Like, I don't get it. How, how the fuck don't you get it? But you're not going to get it because it's your friend that's doing it. And you're always going to defend your friend every time she does some stupid ass shit. So, of course, you're not going to understand it. Of course, you're not going to get it. Period. And then she was like, um, my kids could have seen that. My kids could have done this. My kids could have done that. Whatever. So, um, Giselle said, well, I got kids too. And you was looking at Grace real cockeyed or whatnot. So, Wendy apologize to grace and then she said now i'll be waiting for my apology to my kids whenever you're ready to give one and i was just like yeah pretty much but giselle ain't finna apologize to your kids because she don't think that she did shit wrong and that's just the truth then candace started calling out karen and giselle for for the things that they've said to each other and they still feel like they they haven't done anything wrong they don't go below the belt they don't do this and y'all absolutely go below the belt yes the fuck y'all do and i wish y'all would stop trying to act like what the, the shit that y'all say is better than the shit that, Ca that candace says like candace don't say nothing no worse than what the fuck y'all be saying i wish y'all would stop trying to play with stop playing with me stop it stop playing with me stop playing with the rest of us because we all see what the fuck y'all doing stop it stop it with the bullshit okay y'all y'all are no better y'all are no better y'all go down and dirty like that girl do stop karen and giselle have a warm moment giselle was about to start crying and she they basically made amends they're in a much better place with their relationship pretty much that's where they're at with it okay so i guess that's a good thing because we're all tired of karen versus giselle part six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen like we're tired of it at this point they keep on talking about candace and her body shaming like I don't, my thing is, if you're going to call, Ashley, if you're going to be mad at Candace for what she said about your wide body ass, be mad at your husband. Because when y'all was sitting up in that car, he was being very misogynistic with the shit that he said about your body. But you're not going to say nothing about that because Mike is off limits at this point, right? Girl, bye. Somebody asked, was Candace jealous of Ashley because she's a mother? And we thought that Candace was going to do her routine cry, but that didn't happen. That was funny as fuck. Candace starts calling out the colorism in the group. She starts saying that she that Ashley has light-skinned privilege and all of this other stuff. You know, because Ashley was saying that you call me wide body. Candace said you talked about my dry hair, you know. And it's just like, well, y'all both have done shit to each other. So why don't y'all both take ownership and accountability for the shit that y'all have said? Ashley wants... Candace to take ownership and accountability for the things that she said to her but Ashley also needs to take accountability and ownership for the shit she said so maybe when she does it Candace can do the same damn thing cause like I keep saying y'all both do the same shit to each other both of y'all need to just own up to y'all bullshit cause one ain't better than the other one period is there colorism in the group that's what Wendy said Ashley feels like there is no colorism in the group there's nothing that would make her believe that there's colorism there is colorism in the group it, it most definitely is. And people don't like to have this conversation. But it's the truth. There is colorism in the group. And I'm going to tell you why it's colorism in the group. Because it's like this. Ashley can get nasty. Ashley can say somebody was a drunk driver. Ashley can say whatever the fuck. Any type of nasty thing she wants to say. Candace turn around and do it. It's a problem. Uh, Robin can roll up on Ashley at a bar or whatever, wherever the fuck they was at that kangaroo ass restaurant that Ro that Ashley and Michael had, and try to fight her. But if but if Wendy did something like that, she would be aggressive and ferocious. You know what I'm saying? It was okay when she did it. It was okay because Giselle thought it was cute when she did it. But when Monique was fighting, it was a problem. But when, but when your friend was getting ready to fight and you sit up here calling her robbing money, robbing money Mayweather, that was funny to you. And you even blamed Ashley for participating. But you didn't have that same energy last year. See, it's the hypocritical shit that I be talking about. If you're going to hold somebody accountable for something, hold them all accountable. You know what I mean? Hold them all accountable. Because you thought it was funny games when Robin was going to whoop Ashley ass. But you was just so outraged when Monique got the fighting with Candace. If you're outraged about fighting, be outraged about it when it's happening with anybody, including the people that you like. That's the issue that I got. So it is colorism. It reminds me, like I said on my panel, it reminds me of Basketball Wives. Evelyn could go around 
throw drinks at people, slap people, jump across tables on people, and all of that other shit. But all OG had to say was that she will beat your ass. She's talked about whooping ass, and everybody's afraid, and she's aggressive. That's colorism. Y'all can sit up here and try to play these games with me if you want to, but it's fucking colorism. And y'all don't want to sit up here and own it. That's what it is. It's a lot of shit that Ashley can get away with on this show, but Candace can't get away with it. It's a lot of shit that Robin can do. Robin can be as aggressive as she wants, but once Wendy does it, they act like they fucking scared. Please stop. Please stop. Colorism. It is. I'm not one to call colorism on every single thing that happens, but that is colorism. Stop. Did Candace call Ashley a slave? She certainly did call her a slave. You calling her you calling Michael a slave owner, a slave driver or whatever. And you call this girl a bad wench, you're calling her a slave. Just own it, Candace. Just own it. Just take accountability for it. You call the fucking girl a slave. Just say, yeah, bitch, I called you a slave and keep it moving. Stop stop trying to deny the shit. Stop denying it because you know you called that fucking girl a slave. Like, straight up. I've been defending you, but I also got to tag your ass for a second. You did call that fucking girl a slave, and that's just what it is. Own it. Move on and own it. That's all I'm saying. Um, So we start getting to the root of the issue, and Candace says that she's holding a lot of grudges against Ashley. One being the fact that she wrote that um, statement for Monique when her and Monique got into that physical altercation. Now, I've always said that that was the problem between Candace and Ashley, but Ashley even said that she didn't think that Candace would care about her writing the statement. To be quite honest, I didn't think that she would care either, because let's be honest, Candace and Ashley are not friends. So why would so what did you expect her to do for you? You expect her to have some type of loyalty to you just because you got beat up or whatever? No, she don't give a fuck about you. You're not her friend. So, of course she's going to do that. It is what it is. But what's really killing me about this situation is that Giselle and Robert are now changing their tune. Because just last season they were saying that Ashley wrote that statement to hurt her. But now Robin and Giselle are now saying, but can't you see that she did not do that to hurt you? But you two bitches said last season that that's exactly what Ashley was trying to do, which was hurt that fucking girl. That's what y'all said. Oh my God. And y'all... But y'all see why I had the opinion that I had last season, though. Y'all was dragging me up and down for dragging Giselle and Robin for railroading Ashley with this shit. And here they go, changing their damn mind. This is why I was going in on them about it, and y'all was sitting up here being mad with me about it. But now y'all see that these two trifling heifers ain't shit. I've been saying it. They did not support Candace because they wanted to. They supported her because they had a common enemy and their enemy was fucking Monique. If the support was genuine, I would not care. But the fact is, they wanted to ice that fucking girl out. They they had it out for her from the very start. And because she made this stupid ass decision by, beat, by fighting her, they took Candace aside and they whisked her ass right on out of the show. That's the truth right there. And they keep on showing where their cards at every time the show continues. They did not fucking care about Ashley writing that statement. Last season, oh, so you did that to assassinate Candace's character. Robin, that came out of your mouth, but now you saying that Ashley didn't do that to hurt Candace. You a lie. You said that that's what she did last season. But now y'all want to say on Twitter, oh, they're allowed to change their mind. No, the fuck they're not. No, the fuck they're not. No, they're not. You stand on that shit. You stand on it. Y'all said last season that's what the fuck she was doing. She was she did that to to her Candace to to assassinate her character. That's what y'all said, and now y'all changing y'all tune up. Just like y'all did not agree with her fighting with Monique, but now y'all changing y'all tune up and y'all are saying that if Mia wanted to hit Candace, she would have been well within her rights. Y'all just keep on making yourselves look like complete hypocrites. That's what the fuck y'all doing. And I see, I, I've been seeing it from the very beginning. But no, nobody wants to hear nothing I had to say. Everybody wanted to be all upset with Scotty because he was calling it out. It is what it is. Oh, I was paid by Monique because I was calling it out. Now y'all see what the fuck I'm saying. Fuck out of here. Like, straight up. Um, my thing with Candace is this right here. She even started crying and saying that she's disappointed that Ashley and Karen are still friends with Monique. 
Who the fuck are you to tell them who the hell they can and cannot be friends with? First of all, why are you? Why do you even care about Ashley and Monique being fucking friends to begin with? Why do you care? You don't even fuck with Ashley, and you said it many times before. You don't like Ashley. Why do you care that she's friends with someone that you don't fucking like? Dislike them bitches together. Why do you even care? Like who? Who are you to dictate who can be friends and who, who they can't be friends with? That's not your place. It's not your business because everybody's fucking grown. Who the fuck are you, Candace? That's all I'm saying. Who are you to tell somebody who they can and can't be friends with? You're out of your mind with that one. You lost me on that one. Then you said that you're still mad with Karen because she's still friend with Monique. Like, who are you to tell them who they can and can't be friends with? You still friends with certain people? No. I, I, I don't agree with that one at all. Fuck all that. Talking about Wendy's new body... Um, Giselle and Robin still don't think that they were body shaming, but they were. They were sitting up there completely being judgmental aunties the whole time. Like, straight up. They started talking about the candle um, line and all this other stuff. And now she got five and seven wick candles. I'm not going to blow up my house with Wendy's candles. I'm just not going to do it. But then they started getting into the Eddie rumors and stuff like that. And um, at the end of it all, Giselle did try to... Put portray that Wendy is only got surgery due to the rumors. That's it. She did that to keep a man. But I never knew she had a tummy tuck and the fact that it didn't keep Jamal was an epic read for me in that regard. Wendy read the fuck out of Giselle and that's just what it is. Like for real, for real. Like she straight up read Giselle down. Period. She read her the fuck down. Okay. So that's it for part two. Good reunion. Good episode. All of that. Now the um, Whether You Like It or Not panel will be Monday night at 9.05 Eastern Time. And it will not be hosted by me. It will be on Give You The Real Tease page, okay? Because I'm going to be late because I have to work late tomorrow night. So be sure to tune in. Set your reminders. The link will be available to you um, on my community wall so y'all can set your reminders and be ready for the um, for the panel. If I'm not mistaken, I think Sh Brandy Chanel may be a guest again on the panel tomorrow night, okay? Um, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed the review. Um, I'll definitely be back for more. <laughs> I'll be back. And, um, yeah. So be sure to be on the lookout for more videos, more everything. Um, if you haven't seen Boys Night Out yet, please tune in. We had a great response to, um, Friday night's episode. Very, very good response. Um, very good response to my interview with, me and Jamar's interview with George from Chase and Dallas as well. We had a great interview. Um, but with that being said, you guys, this be your boy Scotty. Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And also, if you want to follow me on social media, my Twitter and my IG will be down below. Just hit me up in the DMs on IG if you want me to follow you back. With that being said, you guys, your boys out here until my next video. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. We can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch.